most people use their psychology all the time. They're not accessing the spiritual ground. That doesn't mean they don't have spiritual ground. And also, the reverse can happen. One can access their spiritual ground, but they usually do it by going around their psychology, by transcending it, not by going through it. And because of that, many gurus need therapy. And now it is my great joy and honor to introduce you to A.H. Almas. A.H. Almas is the pen name of Hamid Ali, a leading voice in contemporary spirituality who has written 18 books, including Runaway Realization and Space Cruiser Inquiry. He is founder of the Ridwan School, a worldwide organization that is an inner work school devoted to the realization of true nature. With Sounds True, Hamid has created the audio learning series on the diamond approach, and also an online course on inquiry and an online course on endless enlightenment. Hamid, welcome to the Psychotherapy and Spirituality Summit. I'm so glad that this finale, if you will, of our series is a conversation with you. It's a true treat. I'm glad to be talking with you and contribute. Wonderful. Now, Hamid, you and I have spoken in the past, and one of the things that you said to me once really struck me. I mentioned to you how I thought one of the unusual features in the diamond approach, the approach that you teach, is this bringing together of psychotherapy and spirituality. And you said to me, who took them apart? And I thought that was a very pointed response. So talk a little bit to our listeners how there's an inseparable union of psychology and spirituality within the diamond approach. Well, the separation between psychology and spirituality is a recent thing. In the last hundred, couple of hundred years ago, before that, all spiritual traditions included psychology. The yoga, they have their, you know, their psychology, but, you know, a different state of consciousness and, you know, obstacles and all that. And Buddhism does and in the Kabbalah and Sufism, they have the, you know, so the science of the soul, which has to do with the psyche and its operation. And, they were not seen as two separate things because psychology means the way the mind operates, whether it operates in a correct way or not. Spirituality means the basis of the mind, consciousness, and how whether we're in touch with it or how much. But the basis of the consciousness and the functioning of consciousness, which is psychology, are inseparable. The two sides of the same thing. And it is the particular ways that thinking process and the emotions and, and it's the dynamic and the laws of, of those operation, which is exactly what spirituality works with to be able to access the basis of the mind or consciousness, which is the true nature. So when teachings talk about working with obstacles, what are were they working with? They're working with the psychology, with the psychological content. They're not working with some odd things. I know some old teaching, they thought they're working with demons and stuff like that. But it is really one's own, you know, psychological constellation or operation. Now, Hamid, I think part of where the feeling sense comes that psychotherapy and spirituality are separate. We can take it from a couple of different sides here, but let's take it to begin with from the side of the spiritual teacher who seems to have this capacity to transmit resting in awareness or resting as the ground of being. And yet when they're not teaching or they're not on the cushion, there are things about their interpersonal relationships, you could say their personal psychology, that seem pretty screwed up. 
And there's a sense of, oh, this seems separate. They understand and can transmit what it means to rest as the ground of being, but look how they act. How do you understand that? That's, that's a good point. That's one of the things I think is important to see the connection of psychology and uh, spirituality. Just because psychology and spirituality are two sides of the same consciousness, that doesn't mean you cannot use one without the other. Most people use their psychology all the time. They're not accessing the spiritual ground, right? That doesn't mean they don't have spiritual ground. And also, the reverse can happen. One can access their spiritual ground, but they usually do it by going around their psychology, by transcending it, not by going through it. Mm -hmm. And because of that, many gurus need therapy. Mm -hmm. Really, they actually need therapy to live their life, you know, in a normal human kind of functional way because their psychology is messed up. I remember asking friends of mine who are very deep into Tibetan you know, tradition, I said, how do the lamas deal with their psychological things? And the friend told me they don't. They simply don't. They don't do it. They don't have a way of doing it. So many of them, even the very highest lamas, they have screwed up psychologists sometimes. Sometimes are okay. they're okay. It depends what they come up with, they come in into the t practice with. Some come in with ordinary, normal, sort of not too conflictual psychology. If they had a love, a great love and care through their life, they're fine. And they don't have much distortion. Some come in with a lot of trauma, a lot of difficulties, or a lot of distortion, and those tend to remain. They don't go away. So when people talk about awakening, and they think awakening, you just awaken to your true nature, and your psychology drops off, it's simply not true. I have not seen anybody do that. So everybody who said they have their awakening by some sudden thing, I still see their psychology operating, even when people don't see it. Mm -hmm. I can feel it. Mm -hmm. Of course, people know them uh, know more. But so um, there are several things that are very important to see about psychology and um, spirituality is that because spirituality has to do with the ground of consciousness instead of the outer or practical uh, functioning of consciousness, there are ways we can access that ground by going around or going beyond or transcending the usual psychological and mental operation. In fact, that's what they, they do with the many of the practice. They do concentration, quieting the mind, focus on something, so that and and deal with, uh, as you know, many of the meditation it, it tell you to deal with distractions, excitement, or heaviness. Well, where do, where do these, these come from? Distraction, excitement, heaviness, where do they come from? They come from the psychology. But they have methods of how to so deal with them without really getting into what they're about. So the meditative techniques deal with these, uh, what they call obstacles, through a method of sort of quieting them down or basically focusing so that they uh, you become so focused that, uh, that distraction sort of becomes background, but they never know where the distraction come from. So psychology gets into what those people call distraction, what makes you excited, what makes you heavy, and it turns out there's a great deal there. There's a lot that psychology works with, and of course, the application psychology that way, our modern culture called psychotherapy. Okay, Hamid, so I just want to understand something. When we started, you talked about how all of the ancient wisdom traditions have a psychology embedded in them that's working with, with obstacles. And yet at the same time, here's examples of 
various kinds of spiritual teachers within those traditions. You mentioned Tibetan Buddhist lamas, who are they not using the tools of the tradition to get at their own psychology, or are the tools not there? No, no. It's, uh, it's not exactly that. They have their psychology, but their psychology is a very primitive. They don't have the psychology, psychological knowledge that we have developed in the last hundred, over a hundred years ago, like the effect of the unconscious, like the effect of childhood on the mind, the effect of trauma, the effect of abuse. They don't have that. They don't understand that. But they have psychology in the sense, like the Abhidharma, consists psychology. They they classify psychological trait, anger, greed, this and that. They do classification and then they do antidotes for them, for instance. But they don't know how to work them out. They don't know where they come from. They don't explore where they come from. So they have psychologies in the sense that but the psychologies in the ancient times are primitive compared to what we know are primitive, they work for them in terms of applying their methods. But that doesn't mean the practitioner managed to work through the basis of those obstacles. So help me understand what we've learned psychologically in the last hundred years that the wisdom traditions really need to be more effective and upgrade their psychologies. You mentioned the discovery of the unconscious. Tell me more about that and how that changes how we work with ourselves. That what we most people experience now has a lot, most of it is determined by unconscious forces and events that they're not conscious of. A lot of it are events that happened in the early childhood and other times. And in the, in the, in the in psychology called depth psychology, that's called psychodynamic. Psychodyn- it's the dynamic of the psyche. That is something unconscious, hidden, actually affect, makes us feel one way or another. Make we, we feel depressed, scared, you know, uh, paranoid, uh, confused. And it's not because of what's happening now, but because of things that happened a long time. And it's part of the sense of self, sense of psycho, sense of ego, part of the structure of the ego. So um, many of the things that modern psychology came up with, for instance, came up with the idea of identification. If you identify with something or not. Most ancient psychologists didn't come up with the the concept of identification. Like the issue is not just attachment. Attachment is something you identify with a certain benefit, like with a certain impression of yourself, a memory of yourself, or experience of yourself, or a feeling. Identify with it as if it is you, as if it characterizes you. So modern psychology is called identification. And turns out it's one, one of the laws of the psyche. That was not really that well known in the ancient time. Same thing, the process of repression itself, which is the more, more people know about, and how repression has many ways of repressing through denial, through reaction formation, through projection, through. Uh, physical kind of blockages and all of that, that was not very well known. I mean, the cabal, some of the cabal say, well, we've known some of that, Freud didn't reinvent it, he just, well, they might have not known it, but they haven't formulated it. So many of the wisdom traditions, although they had some interesting psychologies that are useful for modern psychology to know, They didn't know many of what we call psychology now, especially the psychology that is used for many of our psychotherapies. For for instance, the effect of trauma. They didn't know. They didn't know that most of their students couldn't understand, couldn't access the spiritual state because they were traumatized. So they kept beating them up. Actually, in Tibet, they beat them up. That's how they trained their lamas. They spanked them because they can't get it. While the fact, if they're traumatized, beating them up, re-traumatizes them, makes them worse. They didn't get it. 
And I and I and the way I look at it, one reason to explain why throughout all tradition only very few people get awakened or enlightened is they happen to be those people who had relatively healthy psychology, who then have big psychological issues to deal with. And those are the one who got it, the people who had a lot of psychological baggage. They didn't get it because the teaching didn't address them, the teacher didn't know how to address them. So our psychology can be great help for spiritual teachings. And I wish more of spiritual teachers learn about psychology and how to use it in their teachings because I think it will help them individually but it will help them to help their students.